fact remains that they let us be here and develop for so many years that to let someone be out there, build a home and a lifestyle and a community, and then to all of a sudden say, okay, it's illegal because 20 years ago we said this. It's just, you know, it's not the way it should be. Anybody can tell you that that's just not the way things are done. You know, it's not fair, it's not right. But just to have people out there, you know, living on an old cracker box, uh, sitting on some styrofoam, waiting for it to fall apart, and then just leave it and let somebody else pay for cleaning it up, I just don't see how you can justify that in a, in a major resource like San Francisco Bay. Yeah, some people are unhappy with Rudy. He gets a little overboard with his collecting, but actually, in a way, does a service on the water because he collects all the junk that's floating around and he uh, recycles it. He, he sells it like flotation boats. You get a sunken boat and pull it up and fix it up. So, in a way, he's doing a public service. Some people uh, are offended by this. It's a kind of a massive sculpture in a way. You take this whole thing, bring it to the Museum of Modern Art in New York and have a great show. started anchoring out in the bay in uh, about seven and a half years ago. And why? Because uh, a very generous person kindly gave us her boat because she was uh, no longer able to enjoy the benefits of living on it. And it was a, a vessel that had all the systems that could be used to recycle and to be self-sufficient. And um, we we knew that uh, uh, living that kind of lifestyle, which doesn't really take so much from the earth, but uses the benefits of the earth, was something we could enjoy. To me, the main thing that I enjoy about it is the light on the water. I know that sounds strange sometimes, but whenever I'm asked, that's, that's the thing that comes to mind, is that the light on the water is so wonderful in its, in its various uh, uh, manifestations. Uh, it's a lifestyle that, that is in the middle of the Bay Area and, and the high tech uh, of San Francisco, and yet it, it's low tech and it's living with the environment very closely. From my perception, it seems that there are certain, certain individual or certain people who look at the boats and, and see that in their eyes, they're a nuisance to look at. Um, we're just part of the community. And so in that, it does not, it does not uh, seem right to uh, send people packing down the road uh, because for some reason or another, uh, others of the community don't like them. So if what the community really wants is to drive out this element from their midst, then eventually, uh, because government agencies have such endurance, um, that it may happen. And in such a case, then uh, I know there are many people who will find it a, a real loss. Uh, but again, uh, we all get what we deserve. The Floating Homes Association represents those people who are here legally, uh, who pay taxes, uh, who pay their birth rent, and who are hooked up to sewers and are in an environmentally responsible mode uh, in the, uh, on the waterfront. 
and there's a very diverse community here. We have rich people, poor people, we have people that are working, people are not working, we have retired people, we have women living by themselves, we have families, we have couples, we have all kinds of uh, people, and that's one of the interesting things about living here. It's uh, one place in Southern Marin where you can come, where you can actually live with a very broad cross-section of people. We do have uh, illegal people living here. That's what we consider them. Uh, we all live here. Uh, we're legally here, and they're illegally here. Uh, a lot of these people uh, uh, use our facilities, our garbage. Our, their dogs run rampant on the docks. They knock people down. Uh, they don't want to conform to any set of living together. Uh, they're basically mavericks. Uh, they don't fit in. Uh, we have a community. Uh, they don't fit in well with our community. So there's conflict. I think that uh, the desire to live out there has some aspect of its fact that it's free. It doesn't cost them anything. It costs us quite a bit of money to live here. We're paying our dues. We're paying our way. We're paying taxes, and we're paying birth rental. And uh, we're supporting local government. We're supporting schools. We're supporting all the facilities. We're responsible people. We're not asking them to do any more than we do. Well, the Big Conservation Development Commission was formed in 1969 as a result of, one, a study commission that determined there was a necessity to stop the filling in San Francisco Bay and to do something about preventing illegal filling and, at that time, permitted filling, and to just be a watchdog over the bay. Well, it's interesting that BCDC uh, has made the determination based on the Macter Petrus Act and other enabling legislation that says that boats that are lived on residential use, that is, constitute fill under the definition in the law. And as a result, can be and should be regulated. And as a result, these people are uh, in an illegal status, uh, you know, living on the boats. So it really is a good law that says you just can't have residential uh, use of the bay. And it's for the protection of everyone. It, it basically views San Francisco Bay and its uh, estuary as belonging to the people for the people's use. Plus the fact that it's one thing to just have a residential use in some boat, but if you take a look at the floating junk, no sane person would possibly consider that these are just merely people living in a boat without the attendant junk and debris that goes along with it. What's well, more than an aesthetic issue? For example, they break loose and they burn. They threaten other established recreational and houseboat marinas. They pollute the bay. They are violating basically the no residential use. They're a, a, a danger to navigation. And we can continue on and on in terms of the environmental and public safety transgressions. I don't think the Anchorage in and of themselves are, are the major source. No, I think all of us contribute. I mean, people are polluters. If you take a look at how much garbage we generate and so forth. But no one has a right to uh, dump raw sewage into the bay. They put their solid waste in the bay and so forth. And incrementally, this adds up. The, the problem is that if you have 50 homes on land, that's going into a sewage treatment system. Here you have 50 homes that aren't doing that. And because of the coliform, bacteria, other toxics in there, hepatitis, whatever, that uh, represents, a, uh, as I recall, something like uh, 10,000 homes in terms of the potential sewage pollution that goes in because it's untreated sewage. We've made Richardson Bay a no-discharge area, which means that it's illegal for boats to empty their heads in a Richardson Bay. And we got static from the boaters in. But I'm saying what applies to one person applies to everyone. You can't trash the bay. And for those people that play in the system and with the system, there's a chance to achieve something. But if you're going to be an outlaw, you're going to be a renegade, there are no rules. And we're just saying, and if you look around, no one has the right to trash the bay. No one. I mean, I've dedicated 14 years of my life to trying to uh, keep the bay clean, and I'm not going to let anyone despoil it. Uh, some people aren't house broke and, and like dogs pissing the bushes, but generally speaking, anyone who lives a full time out here isn't going to, isn't going to, you know, I mean, you just don't have to sleep on your own wet spot. That everyone out here that I know is careful. The, most of the crap that comes out floating around on the water, uh, milk cartons and beer bottles and stuff like that, comes from the people who come down on weekends to use their expensive pleasure boats, and they don't suppose it matters. Most of the crap comes out of the marinas. The people who live out here habitually are, uh, some of them, uh, meticulous, fastidious. I've been on the bay out here for 30 years now. 
I think I think maybe when I anchored the promise out here, I may have been uh, one of the uh, a precursor of coming events for sure. The promise was a little Navy whaleboat, 26 foot long. I anchored out here with it in 1960, and they told me you can't do that. You spoil our view. And I said, you're mistaken. I says, I'm part of your view. This is navigable water exactly, yeah. and navigable vessel. And I says, and you have no choice if you dislike me here but to ignore me. And I said, if you ignore me, I says, I'll do the same favor. I'll ignore you in return. And right away they saw a bargain was worth striking. And that basically the same, the same, the same might will prevail here. Oh, many people for different reasons sympathize with the idea of putting a boat together and maintaining that kind of a dream. It takes years to put a good boat together and make it work right. But then there are other people who just resent uh, folks who have to, who live so close to where it costs them so much. We were living here before all that expensive stuff was thrust in here. Now they're resenting the fact that some of us are still living here. <laughs> that, and the, over there you look at Strawberry Point. All those houses over there are crammed so close together. They're a huge, bizarre collection of architecture. And the poor people, those houses are too large for single family dwellings. So close to each other, you can't throw a bucket of piss out your window without staining your neighbor's wall. And all those folks look down and dislike us uh, for being unsightly. <laughs> it's really bizarre. It's really bizarre. The very fact that people on the land can complain about boats and have their complaint heard is a condemnation of governmental process. The, the betraying of the public trust is the government, not the people. The government is put together by the people to facilitate, not to forbid, this kind of activity. Anything people have to do in order to sustain themselves and keep their lives together uh, should be promoted and, and uh, nurtured. In this past year, we did an inventory of all the sunken objects that could be found on Richardson Bay. And there were in excess of 100 abandoned sunken objects, craft, junk, lumber, uh, various devices that had floated at one time or another. Some were actual boats. Some were houseboats. Uh, they'd all been abandoned. Now, this has got to stop. I mean, this is, you know, folks out there talk a lot about freedom. And I was reading something recently, and I think it was Shaw who said, with freedom comes responsibility. So we have started a bay cleanup, and the anchor outs, some of them, are helping us with that. We've made an agreement with the Army Corps of Engineers, and on certain days we can bring stuff into the Army Corps uh, trash pile there. So this is the nature of the problem sewage in the bay and trashing the bay. I mean, it's, it's that simple. There are responsible people out there. In fact, I've come to decide that people in any neighborhood, like right here, we have good neighbors and we have neighbors that don't care. We have neighbors that are quiet and respectful. We have neighbors that are noisy. We have neighbors who keep their yards in order and there are others that don't. And it's the same thing out there. But, uh, uh, since it is a natural resource that belongs to everyone, it belongs to the people of the state of California, and we're, uh, it's in our vicinity and it's up to us to, to take care of it. So that's what we're trying to do. Now when you think that on the Sausalito waterfront we have several thousand recreational boats, five marinas, uh, most of those boats have engines of one kind or another. And if we're concerned about wildlife and that kind of thing, uh, you can imagine what's coming out of that, those bay. Uh, we have at least three boatyards where lots of toxic substances are used all the time in painting and cleaning and so forth. And although there's a lot of regulation coming down to control that, it's still there and there's still abuse of that kind. So those, these are other things that affect the bay. And part of the, the importance of the bay is the wildlife. And I think the wildlife is probably more affected by the discharge from the dis and the toxic stuff that comes out of a marina than they are by a handful of anchor outs sitting out there. You know, people come and go, but the bay's going to be here for a long time, and I think we have a responsibility for leaving it the way we found it. Well, we try to keep it clean and the garbage picked up. And yeah, you know, I feel we owe a responsibility to the area, you know, and I feel bad because some people don't see it as clearly as I do, but uh, in general, that's very much the case. who don't 
see it that way, and they're beginning to realize, I think, uh, no man is an island. It's hard to imagine living out here. Um, I don't know, some people either take to it or they don't. It's a real hard life for one thing. You got to carry everything out here you use and then carry all the garbage back. And then there's firewood and there's water and there's batteries and there's propane. Yes. And it just goes, grow, you know, just without anything in their hands or out of, else without a pack on. And for that reason, a lot of people can't get into it. But if you can get over that, there's a nice peacefulness. There's a little barrier around you via the water that gives you, uh, it's just a nice feeling. Out here, you know, I mean. We're on the swing. Yeah, you know, we're rolling. It's, uh, there's some peace and quiet, not to say it's not punctuated by moments of sheer terror. Let me tell you, I mean, it's comfortable. This kind of lifestyle it definitely lends itself to it because uh, you got to be out there all the time, on your toes. especially when you don't want to. When all hell is breaking loose and you know everything's just falling apart at your place, and you see somebody else starting to drag, and you know you got to go help them, and you know you got to get in your boat, and the waves are going, and it's you know it's rain, you're soaking wet, and it's cold. And it's been going on for two days, and you know, I mean, it's like laugh because uh, to keep from crying. I don't believe most women could handle the, not having, you know, a hot shower on a regular basis, um, boiling water to do your dishes, or hauling everything to shore, or working on an engine, or you know, really getting dirty. And uh, I, I don't, I don't mind that, you know, because I. I like to feel the accomplishment of it, and you know, it feels good to work hard. I know you get hooked up in this thing to make a living, and it perpetuates itself, but I don't even want to get involved. I don't need all that stuff. I have no desires for it, really. I want to have, uh, I just want to have a nice life, something that I enjoy, a lifestyle that I enjoy. I'm not, Obviously, uh, you know, I make decent money doing what I'm doing most of the time, but uh, it's enough to just uh, be comfortable. I want to be happy in my life because I'm never going to be rich. I think basically that's where over here, they're all million dollar plus homes, you know, and, uh, and there's a lot of people that are pretty picky and got their noses in everybody else's business. And hey, the boats were here first. You know, they're the ones, a neighbor to move in next door to you and then all of a sudden, I don't like your fence over there. Or your front door isn't painted the right color. Those kind of people speak for themselves. Unfortunately, they're represented by people in power because money and uh, that's why the situation exists to my mind. I have been dealing with the anchor outs for approximately a year now to try to develop a solution to the liveaboard situation on Richardson Bay. Uh, the, as you're aware, the ordinance was passed two years ago that prohibited any liveaboards. The county and the city felt that that may be a little bit too uh, harsh and that a better way to work this or to, to resolve the situation would be to come up with an interim so that they could continue that lifestyle for two to three years until reasonable alternatives become available and then enforce the ordinance uh, as far as anything new coming on the bay goes. Uh, what we have, uh, the anchor outs, myself and the different politicians involved in it, and the administrators, have worked out as a draft proposal where there will be two moorages, one off Waldo Point and one off Clipper Harbor. Each one of those moorages would have 12 to 20 anchor outs uh, on mooring buoys. Uh, there would be an access point. The one off uh, Clipper would be the Army Corps of Engineers, the park just north of the Army Corps of Engineers. We would install a dinghy dock so that the anchor outs would have a place to tie their dinghies to. And those, both those access points would also be public access. Wouldn't be restricted to the anchor outs. The public can use them also. Uh, the regulations that they would live under or each boat would have to be equipped with a sewage holding tank. They'd have to have fire extinguishers, life-saving equipment, they would have to, uh, they'd have to access the points we told them to rather than just go wherever they want, garbage or, or storing things on their boats that were visible. And uh, I think we're probably within three to four months of, of coming up with a solution. We still have to 
uh, resolve some differences with Bay Conservation Development Commission, BCDC, State Lands Commission, and uh, I, I would have to say we're still negotiating. It's not a done deal at this point in time. And, and obviously, once we get to the point where we've all the parties can agree, then we have to go public with the thing and make sure the public gets their appropriate input. I feel, and I think the city and the county feel, to enforce the ordinance at this point in time when those folks that have been out there for a long time and just kick them off the bay. That, that they deserve some right to stay out there for some period of time during which we, we can help them find better alternatives. To have what you see out there, piles of junk and uh, uh, boats that uh, couldn't weather a storm, uh, and in most cases don't, or sunk boats, as you can see out there, we have sunk boats, we have un are, you know, in no sense of the word, of any use to anybody, uh, then uh, why, why in the world would you allow that on a public use? Would you allow people to put shacks up in Golden Gate Park? I mean, how would, how would, it's not necessarily just our backyard, this is everybody's Richardson Bay. If we let this continue 100 years from now, can you imagine what the bay would be like? Uh, you can't use the bay as a, as a garbage can. That's just not uh, uh, acceptable to most people. I don't believe that even the people on the hill are that insensitive. I don't believe that even the people with the most money you know, can deny us a lifestyle that we choose to live or a manner in which we, you know, find pleasing to us. I mean, if we're willing to live this way, at least, you know, we're quiet and sheltered and fed and, you know, don't hurt anybody else, um, why they would want to infringe on our lifestyle is not for them to say. Um, you know, I believe it's a lot better than sleeping on the streets outside of a church, you know, on Fifth and Mission. And I believe that it's, you know, a lot better than standing in a welfare line. And I believe it's a lot better for my mental health just to, to have the freedom to do so.